Okay, so this is part two to the headlight intro. I'm taking apart. If you're just coming in, I hope you watch part one because you're going to miss some vital information. Step one of taking these headlights apart. One thing I did forget to mention was that uh, the reason for them... I pretty much ordered the headlights unaware of the fact that the projector sucked. Even though it was all over the internet, it was a, a lack of research on my part and it's something I'll never do again. Um, however, now that I do know the issue, they did not advertise on eBay that you cannot put HIDs in this. They just assume that you should know that because they come with halogen bulbs. Now, this has been in here for eight minutes. I'm going to take them out and take the lens off. I'll turn this around here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Not too much. Okay. And uh, we'll see what we got going here. But I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the company, DT Moto, has already tried to like distance themselves from responsibility by saying that like pretty much I should have already known that when I ordered them and that they came, when they came with halogen bulbs. Typical, but whatever. I even asked them if they had any that were designed for um, for HID use, and they were like, no. So a lot of their issues were they were concerned with melting. I did not have that issue, even with a 55 watt eBay kit from Zentech. I've used Zentech a lot. I've had issues with them. I've had good experiences with them. I mean, it's eBay. I'm going to be honest with you. Zentech is a lower level HID. However, I've had really good experiences with them and I've had not so good experiences with them. I've never had an experience with them where I was like, I'm never going to buy this again though. So. The hardest thing about this was getting it started. But once you get it started, kind of just comes apart. Now, you got to be real careful that you get, because this shit just gets everywhere, man. But the thing is hot as hell. And as you can see, it's just goopy as hell. I had gloves on before. All right, now we're starting to get, there we go. So once you start to get it to where it starts to come out, it comes out relatively quickly. Now you do have to move a little bit because you wanna try to get it apart while it's still you know, like hot. Yeah, that's hot. The other problem that I did notice with these is that the halos do not have a disconnect. So if you're trying to pry these apart, be careful that you don't pull too hard because of the halos. Whew. It's hot, man. Definitely hot. Stuff is like tar. I will tell you that at least you don't have to worry about any condensation with these because they had these things sealed up like a bank vault. Okay. We are pretty much apart here. A lot easier when you know that you gotta take screws out. And it's out. So, as you can see, it's taken apart. My mother is gonna be pissed because I have ruined one of her thingamajiggers here. <laughs> Forgive me, I, don't, I forgot what they're called. But um, anyway, I'm getting this stuff all over the headlight, which I'm not liking at all, but it does seem to be rubbing off a little bit. 
So I'm gonna try to maybe take some WD-40. I'll let you know, I'll do research before you, don't do that, don't quote me on WD-40 yet. I know it takes like duct tape off of paint and stuff like that, but don't, don't do it until I try it. I'd rather, you know, destroy my stuff before you guys destroy yours. But I'm gonna try to give you the best view of this as possible. Now that it's apart, um, I disconnected these wires right here for the LEDs that go up the side. I don't know if I can zoom in any more than that. My, my computer is kind of like ready to fall over. So, but I disconnected those. And then what you're going to do to get that projector out is you're going to take off the, the same screws that you use to adjust it. This one up and down and left and right. Those are the screws that hold it in place essentially. So you just want to back those out, but you want to do it back and forth because it's going to like shimmy out. When you, when you do one, it's going to crank the projector one way. And when you do the other way, it's going to crank it this way. So you don't want to do it too much where you break something. So I go, I just go back and forth, shimmy it. And don't ever use a power drill when you're just actually adjusting them or you'll be very upset with the results. Not only can you risk breaking something, but it's very hard to fine tune it. Another major design flaw that I found of these headlights was that the adjustments were not made on top, easily easily accessible. Um, the other thing you'll have to take off is this like little pinch clamp and then just pull the projector out. While you're holding that clamp. It might fall out. Ah, here we go. Okay, and we're out. And this is the other projector. Came out relatively easy. Um, I'm gonna cut my oven off now because I am literally sweating. You are gonna have to put them back in the oven when you reseal it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this back together for now. It shouldn't seal to itself. It does, you just place it in the oven for a few minutes. And I'm going to put this back in the room for a minute. Give me one second. Okay, so both of these are out. I've utterly destroyed um, an oven mitt and one of my flathead screwdrivers, but that's fine. But I did get a chance to take it apart and show you what they look like inside. So inside of it, what a lot of people say is a problem with with cheap projectors is the finish of the chrome now i don't know if you can see that too well but the finish of this chrome is actually really good i mean i don't see any pitting it is really good the the problem with halogen projectors is also something that has nothing to do with the materials per se, but more of the design, which I'm gonna show you right now. So, an HID bulb, the body of the bulb itself is actually longer than a halogen bulb. So when this sits in here, the light that's being reflected is not being reflected to the bulb's design for, for a shorter bulb, it's being, that's why you're getting beam scatter and all types of stuff. As you can see, the bulb is sitting in there. And it may look like, oh, it should work fine. But it's if it's not sitting the, exactly how it's designed to be sitting in there, it's going to mess up your beam pattern. I know I'm not like getting in there as good as other. Oh, there. That might be a good view. Okay. So HID bulbs are much longer than halogen bulbs. So these are not designed to throw HID beams. The other thing is that make sure when you reinstall these that your cutoff shield is not on the top. It's on the bottom. When you look through your projector lens, everything is upside down, okay? Everything's upside down. So when this throws the pattern, it's gonna flip it. So I don't know if you can see my my face as we're looking through this but it's upside down so 
this goes in like that. So it lets the a lot of people think that when you put these in, you're supposed to go like this because you're that's where your cutoff line is when you when your beam is being projected. You want that cutoff line and the beam to be out from here. You don't want it, but you don't want it to be the light to be going up from this cutoff line. I know I'm kind of like stuttering trying to explain this to you. I'm not great at ex explaining things, but when you install it, it has to be upside down. It has to be opposite of what you think it is. Okay. It threw me for a loop for a loop the first time I did it, but both projectors are out. Um, I will try to include a link of where I got the kit for these. I will do an unboxing and an installation video, and I'll show you how that goes. Um, I had to put my let me crank this thing back so you can see me. I had to put my stock headlights back in, man. That's how bad the beam pattern was. It was throwing light all the way across the road into oncoming traffic. It took me a good hour and a half to aim them because you got to take it out, adjust the screw, put it back in, take it out, adjust the screw, put it back in. And it was just annoying. Luckily, my brother helped me do it. And it kind of eased the process. Plus, he's got like every tool known to man. So, not that you need much. You only need a 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, and like a, a plastic pin popper. Um, but when I put them in, I'll show you all that. Um, right now, this is just really to show you how to get them apart and to let you know that if you are looking to purchase spider headlights, be prepared to want to change the the um, the projectors. Halogen or HID or LED that they suck. Um, the other thing that I like to tell you guys is that the LEDs are okay. They're Osram or you know some real popular light company. As far as the halos go, if you can afford to go a little more expensive on the halos instead of LED, I would highly recommend going to CCFL, which is like a fluorescent ring that goes around instead of an LED. And they are much brighter, especially because it's very hard to see the daytime running lights at in the daytime. I'll include some pictures of them at night. At night, they look they look awesome. But at night, you know, you're not driving with your halos on. You're driving with uh, the lights on. It makes it hard to kind of see the halos. So just some, you know, FYI for guys who are going to go look into spider headlights. And they're not a horrible headlight as far as, like, the price goes. But you figure I paid about $190 for the headlights, and I'm paying another $50 to $60 for the projectors. I should have just bought a better pair of headlights. So my loss, your gain for knowledge. Um... And I'll come back when I get the new ones in. So sit tight, guys.